be blessed by the divine be blessed by the divine be blessed by the divine may the guru guide us and conduct this session universal magnetism uh before going into that uh we want to kind of start the series of uh, satsangs focused around what uh, marishi has uh, said in uh, scientific and also a philosophical manner like combining a blend of this uh so that uh, we apart from doing meditation and exercises we get to kind of listen to these in um, introspect uh these are technically taught in introspection courses but i'm going deviating a little bit from the norm so that people it's exposed to anybody so we can bring in your uh, who is not exposed to meditation to these sessions so we can um, understand the ancient science they are not do meditation they can they can do what they want but at least the uh, scientific background that is being uh, given here can be uh, reflected back in uh, any 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 type of ancient activities we are doing so uh, this is kind of the crux that marishi has kind of uh, taken from different sources uh, vedas uh, tamil scriptures and uh, condensed in a fashion it's very simple so uh, ancient science starts where modern science has not reached so modern science starts only from the subatomic level right which can be measured using the modern equipment and instruments but ancient science goes beyond that uh, so mind is the instrument used by different uh, philosophers uh, in the past to arrive at the same conclusion uh, if you look back at different texts they they would have arrived at the same conclusion how did they arrive at it they used the mind there was no sophistication the uh, instruments there but mind is the most sophisticated instrument of all so only when at when we get to a point where in ancient science and the modern science kind of kind of uh, have a good balance then there's going to be peace and harmony on earth so it's just not about uh, uh, philosophy it is science uh, uh, dictates how we want how uh, your technology needs to be built so this is the underlying uh, technology which can be used in conjunction with the modern scientific approaches so i said that we'll talk about universal magnetism i wanted to kind of start with this because this is the fundamental thing that we need to know uh, about ancient science and also in spirituality if you want to understand the nature of god you need to understand magnetism that's what maharishi used to say uh, uh, gandhanale ariyamal kadavanale ariyamuliya which means if you don't understand magnetism you will not be able to understand uh, the uh, god nature of god uh so we need to start from uh, the fundamental sphere right so these are three principles we want to talk about absolute space formative dust and universal magnetism so we are going to have some assumptions here right? so any science has an assumption modern ancient science also starts from assumption but it is a very strong foundation so uh, absolute space formative dust and universal magnetism these are kind of uh, foundations where uh, everything else will be built upon so absolute space what is that to vacant space vacant space infinite amount infinite amount yeah infinite amount is one of the properties of that space is more cleaner uh, uh so that's the word describes everlasting um uh, which in the in a, in a tamil word it's called vatra irupu which means it always exist in it exist forever and you can't measure it you can't measure where it starts where it ends 
it is always there. It's everywhere, it's here right now. It's you, it's everybody, it's everybody is part of absolute space. Without that, nothing exists. It's just, it's just there. Uh, force, that space which is everywhere, uh, has the inseparable component of force. So it has force within it, which kind of, which is used for the creation uh, process. So force is part of that absolute space, and its inseparable component is consciousness. So force and consciousness are inseparable. It's always uh, you can't say uh, this. Uh, it, it is not existing. It is there. It is the intellect. It is the intelligence, right? So these things are are a primary components of absolute space. When you look at vacuum, you don't understand that it doesn't have all these things. You don't not see it. You can perceive it through the mind. You, can, you cannot see it. You cannot see it. You can see its transformations as every everything that you see in this universe is its transformation. But you can only perceive the nature, true nature of absolute space by using the mind. Any question about absolute space? We can keep this interactive. No? So, formative dust is the second uh, concept. So, this absolute space, which is present everywhere, everlasting, which has, uh, the force is actually self-compressive. So, it's a self-compressive force. Uh, in, in, the, in the space, there's always compression. The space compresses on itself. When the compression happens on all sides, it, it, is, it, is, it, it will triple. So there's compression meaning you, you can compress it for to a certain extent, but after some time it will triple. So at that point of time, it's kind of in the, in the space, there's kind of a twist happening, which is the formative dust. So when the compression, the repulsion happens, the, the formative dust happens. Formative dust is kind of a very small dust particle. In the space kind of, if there's a space like this, if there's kind of a bend, like, you just imagine, and in a part, a dust kind of particle forms, so because of the compression. So, this is always happening in this universe right now, everywhere, this compression is exists. Without compression, um, it, is a, it, is, it is an inherent nature of the space, so it is always there. So, when there is compression, you will get formative dust. And Formative dust is a very, very minute particle. And uh, this is the concept which Maharishi kind of uh, uh, took one step further, like uh, in ancient science, we, they describe it as Akash in, 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 the, in the literature, one of the Panchapodas. Uh, so Akash is kind of formed, it's a collection of formative dust. So, uh, so Akash is the fundamental energy particle, which is the first Panchapoda. Uh, that ancient science talks about. So it's a collection of collection of formative dust results in the Akash particles. <laughs> These Akash particles are everywhere, right? Um, uh, in, in the physical body, it's also there. It, it's present here. You don't see, right? Science uh, hasn't gone to it yet. Uh, uh, that's only perceived through the mind, and uh, it's very very infinite. So that's why it's called infinitesimal energy particle. That's Akash. So, so you have you have no space, you have Akash, right? So assume that you have space and you have Akash. Still, there is compression. The space will still compress on the Akash, right? What happens? The repulsion happens. Uh, so let's say uh, let's say you have. Uh, uh, a raw or, or, or you have a wheel, you know, which is kind of used for sharpening the knife. You know, the wheel is rotating. Okay, um, so when you keep the knife on the wheel, a spark comes up. Right. Similarly, uh, because of the compression of the space on energy particle, uh, it will repel. So the repulsive force coming out of it is called shadow wave particle. I didn't list it here, but it comes 
but its lifetime is kind of uh, not as strong as the Akash, it's going to kind of settle down in space finally. So because of, uh, so that is, that mechanism is called universal magnetism. Basically, it's a combination of the space compressing on the Akash, and as a result of it, an energy coming back out of it, this kind of two combination phenomenon which is combined is universal magnetism. And this is everywhere. Everywhere in the universe is happening, right? Uh, let's go to the next one. So I talked about force, consciousness. Uh, let's get a consciousness a little bit later. So, so this is happening, um, and uh, and this uh, repulsive force slowly dies down, you know, and uh, again uh, the compression happens on the energy particles, and then it's a continuum. It's continuum everywhere in the universe. Uh, so, any questions about the important concept? Uh, consciousness one. Uh, uh, so. Consciousness is nothing but uh, how, uh, uh, in, for any system for that matter, it is the order of function, how a, uh, how a particular system operates. Let's say in, in a solar system, for example, uh, the planets revolve around the sun. It is the order of function of that system, that is consciousness. Who is, the consciousness is, is a property of the space that has three things. One is pattern, and precision, and regularity. So all these, so the, in the solar system, it's, it's a, there's a pattern of uh, how planets are organized and at a particular dis, distance, right? There is precision around, let's say, the planets revolve around, the, uh, let's say, the Earth revolves around the sun like 365 days. There's a precision, right? And regularity and happening. This is not like one year it's doing uh, one day and next year it's 365 days. There's a regularity in the system. Uh, so that consciousness has this in any any in its evolution it could be different in different things but there's consciousness present throughout the evolution right my consciousness will be different from uh, consciousness of an ant or a, or a snake or a bird consciousness has evolved right the sense has evolved so but there is pattern precision regularity in each of these uh, 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 animate and inanimate objects in the universe so consciousness is present So anything in this uh, universe, which is uh, right from like the uh, uh, elements, atoms, and uh, uh, other animate things, which we can see, uh, um, uh, or in this functional universe, apart from absolute space, you can measure it using these things. Right? This is in modern science. You can measure it using force, distance, volume, uh, and time. Right? Uh, all these uh, uh, in the functional universe, everything has a time. Um, and it will expire. Uh, and, uh, similarly, uh, everything has a volume, right? Um, which is if you, if you have volume and you have volume, and the things which are which you can see in the universe has volume to it, and they are all at a particular distance too, right? They can, if uh, like atoms, in an atom you have like. Uh, different uh, electrons, they also have a particular distance. So all these things, uh, which are the functional universe, has a distance component to it. And there is force, uh, which is a component of space. So all these things, which are in the functional universe that you see, can be measured using force, distance, volume, time. Um, Alrighty, we talked about this. So the repulsive force merges with the observed space and creates this magnetism, which is continuing everlasting. Okay. It's all penetrative. It's everywhere. Uh, it can penetrate everywhere, anywhere. If I talk right now, this is uh, what is coming out. The sound, right? Sound is also a transformation of magnetism, which is which can travel through this air and penetrate into your into your system, right? And it gets imprinted in your system. Speak about something. Similarly, 
magnetism, that's what, that's what magnetism uh, has these properties, right? Clash is a wave system. It can it clash, reflect, refract, penetrate, and interact. So these are the properties. Okay. So, it's kind of a little bit of an evolution theory, right? So, uh, combination of formative dust forms Akash, and then these Akash uh, further uh, combine to form um, atoms, and then elements, uh, and then all the other Panjabudas, and then they combine to form all the, the planets, right? So, that's the uh, universe is kind of uh, uh, anything in the universe is made up of these Panjabudas including our physical body. So, I said it's the dance of Shiva and Shakti is because Shiva is the absolute space, Shakti is the formative dust. It is their dance creating, dance meaning the compression and repulsion and, uh, and uh, forming of particles create the whole universe. Uh, so, let's talk about six transformation of magnetism. So, so according to the density of the particles, right, uh, the transformation of the magnetism is different in different places. So in the very, very beginning, when there is absolute space, there is compression and repulsion, right? So that is a pressure. Uh, the, when magnetism, when in that space uh, is pressure, there is nothing else is happening, pressure. Uh, in the air, magnetism transforms into sound so because there's a lot of uh, uh, more particles are there. In that space, it is observed as sound. In the when there's heat in the, in the heavy air, which is the uh, fire, the, it, uh, it is kind of perceived as light, right? Light energy. Um, and in the water, liquid uh, liquid uh, kind of medium, it is perceived as taste and smell in the kind of solid uh, medium, right? So that's how the magnetism transforms. So the same concept is, it is, it is the thing that's coming out of, and when there, when there is compression, there is repulsion, right? That, that medium is different in the, how dense the particles are. So pressure, sound, light, taste, smell. And finally, in the living beings, it is operating as mind. Living being any, even the small uh, uh, animals also have mind. Right? It's not as if they don't have mind. So it is its peak is reached in the human beings. So mind, uh, uh, highest form of evolution is in, in, in the human being. It's evolved, but it's, we're not using it though. So, uh, All these transformations happen in the universe that you see, yeah, like uh, also happen in the physical body too. Uh, because all these Panjabhutas are there in the physical body, right? So these kind of transformation happen within the body. Um, and you have sense organs to kind of understand. If you look at the design, you are like the files, Panjabhuta file, like you have the, it is represented, it's, it's the entire, you have to understand the consciousness here, right? So there's a pattern here, you have, why do you have these things? Five uh, represents the Panjaputas. And, uh, um, and you have uh, all organs to connect it with each of these. Pressure for, uh, you can feel the pressure using the uh, touch, right? Um, acupressure, you know, that's uh, related to this. It's a delta, that's, that's the kind of treatment you can, uh, each of these can you can use uh, for medicinal purpose too. You know, that's, uh, uh, good pressure and sound. We hear the sound in uh, light. You can see, taste, smell, and finally the mind, which can recognize all these things. Uh, it has to recognize it better. Otherwise, it's going to spoil us. So that's that's our job here. That's why we are kind of trying to understand what it is. We have to understand what it is first, now, and then we realize the value of it. And continue to practice uh, to clean up, right? So it's 
So we have to continuously learn about this. It's not as if we learn one day, it's kind of gone. It is a continuous process of understanding the science and applying it in our lives uh, in every situation. Because without magnetism is everywhere. How you deal with it is how your life is going to be. Right? Mind is lighter than Akash, yes, because mind is nothing but uh, biomagnetism. It is it's a wave, right? It will merge in the observed space. So uh, Akash is a particle. So when Akash, uh, Akash is something which spins. We have Akash in our body. It spins all around. There is observed space within the body, right? When the Akash particles hit the absolute space, magnetism is generated. So absolute space is everywhere. So when the uh, Akash hits the, those things, uh, the space, the friction happens, right? Like it happens in the creation of the universe, the uh, here also there is friction. Uh, so that creates this wave, man, uh, wave that is throughout the body. So that transforms into pressure, sound, base, smell, and finally the mind. So it's a very, very subtle. So mind is uh, conscious. Mind should come first, right? It is. I mean, it's a. It is a. It is an aspect of consciousness. I mean, you can say that way, but the, in the, uh, it is an aspect that is present in the actually the living beings more. You know, it's it can be recognized, which, which in the evolutionary process, uh, consciousness used to. This is. This is not present in the inanimate things, right? Uh, they cannot recognize other things. Only in the in the evolution of in the living creatures, these kind of things started. But only in the human mind, in the human being, these things can be recognized. So it's a very very subtle thing. Yeah. Very very light. Um, so it is consciousness. In the, if you look at uh, it, mind, is nothing but consciousness. If you look at it from a of, uh, force and consciousness are inseparable, right? So, uh, consciousness part is the uh, mind and the human being, which is the evolved thing. Uh, consciousness is everywhere, but the evolved consciousness is only in the human beings. Um, it is. Uh, we have to. We have to understand it is evolved. If we don't understand it, we will become a different person. Animal. So, is animal also have karma? Yes. Only because of that we are having it. Animals did those things. Um, they ha it is their nature in the process of evolution. It happened. It, it, those karmas are there. We carry it. So another question. Mind, how is it different from the cell? It is the same. So yeah, it's the same. You just need to understand it is the self. Mind has a lot of impurities, which is it's considered it's, it's, a, it's a, a kind of a wave system, right? In the wave system, it carries information. So the information that you have accumulated through the journey of consciousness from the beginning till now, through different creatures and all these things are hidden. It's not it's not gone. It is there. We just don't under we don't know, and it expresses itself in our action. We are emotional. We are angry. Uh, we do a lot of bad things, right? Those are all there in, in our in that information. It is it will come to you whenever uh, you are when you go to the when you go to that frequency. It'll, those kind of thoughts will come to you automatically, and you perform. The key to key is that you go little, really low in your frequency so that you can understand this and analyze and reject those from your system. So you will have to go lower. So that only when you go lower, you'll be aware to be able to kind of clean up. Yeah, that's me. I think he was referring that um, even Akas have limitation. They only exist in this world universe. The mind can reach the absolute space, which is beyond the universe. If you want to, you can go to that, that absolute space or the absolute space inside it. Yes. So that's why it's bigger than Akas. I think that's why. Is that is so dominating that impure thing that is dominating always than the good things? We always remember the 
bad part of the way, right? Right. And we show it through emotions. How come we are we we do have good things also, which we carry from way to Right. How is that that not so dominating? Bad is so dominating. It depends on the individual, right? Who has that? Like if it is something that if you you exercise that good thing it is good for you to come back to you as good right if if you bad thing is also there and it is not, it is not completely cleaned up right. even one bad thing is uh, good enough to kind of you know, spoil, spoil, all spoil. The all the yeah so those are there in your in your mind they'll come to you as if you don't have the capacity to analyze and reject it if you go and act upon it you are going to the universal magnetism is a wave system it is going to give you justice divine justice mm. That is called the cause and effect system. If you uh, act on it, you're going to get it back as pain or pleasure. Right? It is it is the unfailing divine justice that is present. You may you will not know when it is going to happen, but it will happen. It will happen in this lifetime, or it will happen to your uh, progeny. You know, it, it is or it will happen to your society. If you do the bad things, it is going to record in the universal magnetism, and it is going to properly okay. give it back to the society. You know, it is everybody is connected. Don't think that. Uh, I am done. I am. Uh, I don't have any children right now. I can commit all this crime and all that. Uh, in your thought, word, and deed, it is going to reflect back to you, to you and also to your so surroundings. Society meaning your children and your family and everything. Right. So it's it is. It will give a divine justice. And also, in which frequency we are operating every day. It depends upon uh, uh, how your state of mind is. Right, you right. can be right now uh, calm, and you're you're in a uh, like alpha level, right? Right. Uh, the lower you become, you have a capacity to analyze. So you, it depends on uh, what, what uh, depends on what time or wh what place you are in, what situation you are in. Right. Um, because uh, the wave system can uh, influence your frequency to go high. Depends on where you are. Because anybody, if I kind of talk bad about you, your frequency shoots up. Mm -hmm. Frequency, frequency, frequency or both. Both. Yes. You, you know, so every, every individual has uh, you know, the both type of energy, the positive and the negative energy, and it is, uh, for a given type of uh, situation, how you know uh, the, uh, the each energy is uh, reacting to each other, so yeah. it's overpowering and you know overshadowing kind of. So that is where we are just talking about the frequency. Yeah. So if I it's different. Like it's basically, if you kind of think of it, like comp this is all energy particles here. It is. It is just that I'm a physical body is seeing, the, but they are all energy particles. It, things coming out of it is going to go and hit you. It's going to penetrate in your system and cause a, a force that coming back. It can be good if it is. If it depends on what I send here, right? So though that that's the thing. It's a, it's a wave system. It can do all these things: clash, reflection, diffraction, penetration, interaction. All these things will happen, and the divine justice will come back. Uh, you don't know when it's going to come back. It can, it'll come back immediately and go into my genetic center, and then at suitable time, it's going to give me the pain or the pleasure. So, thoughts, word, deed, results, an imprints in the universal magnetism. It's just a record. Whatever we do is a record. That's why you have to go to people, uh, the, the sages go to a frequency where no thought can enter. That's why they escaped and they, they escaped uh, their life and went back to uh, uh, forests and then just be, just they, they are consciousness and they are. Uh, but, but what Maharishi is kind of uh, live by example is you uh, cannot be responsible. You are uh, society. You are responsible to the society that has given you the, your body, which is your parents and your uh, society. Your society as a whole, like the, you know, the probably food and shelter and everything. How can you uh, be irresponsible? You have to do uh, so. Morality, duty, charity is uh, karma. Karma. Yes. So you have to kind of clean. Use that to clean yourself. And you can still be go. You can be at that state where you can continuously uh, clean your karma and attain realization. And the realization doesn't have to happen 
you can realize now and continuously kind of uh, be aware and not create more karmas, right? And still be happy. And if you understand that concept, understand this magnetism, then anytime you uh, perform an action, you be, be really sure that this is this is all is going to happen. So really be sure uh, and, and make sure that you don't think anything which can harm yourself unnecessarily. That is why this twofold moral principle, I in my lifetime will not cause harm to anyone physically or mentally to the extent possible and help others, is a very, 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 very powerful and impactful statement. It is a formula, it is a scientific, ancient scientific formula which can be used to build any technology in the future. If you build this technology, let's say if you build something, anything, commodity for that matter, using this technology, how good that is going to be? Let's say it's a food, right? You grow, you grow a rice, and you grow without causing any harm to that. Uh, you don't spray pesticide, right? Pesticide is hurting that thing, right? And that's, uh, that's harm right there. So, and it, it, everything starts there, and you eat the food, and it finally becomes magnetism again. So, if you build technology using the, the principle of ahimsa, uh, you are going to create good karma, and you be, it, it, it'll, be a, it'll be a place wherein people can realize and be happy, you know. And, and universal brotherhood and friendship blossoms. There's no need for war, there's no need for Everybody will be cooperating and living with each other properly. You know, so it will, this is ha this has to change the, from the fundamental, and you have to start building these technologies. So this is the gap. This is not this is not uh, uh, kind of uh, something which is uh, coming out of the blue, right? It is it is a it is a very very uh, uh, big revelation that has been there since the time the uh, beginning. The, the scripture, everything is there. It is something that is being reinforced by Maharishi, uh, but it's a very, very simplified manner. Um, um, and it's a science by itself. It's just not, uh, we, we, when you teach, you, I think I uh, do an honest request to you to uh, teach your kids these fundamental science. This is science. They don't think of it as philosophy, this is science. Let, uh, they, will, um, they will be, it's a logical, if you teach them these things, it will go into their system. These are two, four moral culture, it will go into their system, it will come back, and it's going to create good things. They will create constructive technologies, they will be a great asset for society. Uh, so, the observer becomes observed. That's, that's, the, that's the state we have to achieve. When you understand the universal magnetism, finally what happens? The universal magnetism goes and merges with the space. So we have to kind of uh, understand the uh, 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 nature of this universal magnetism and become, we are actually the, uh, we, we exercise that within our body through all the senses and we have to finally Ultimately, our goal is to be to become be the uh, be the observer and finally merge with the absolute space, which is the observed. So, when the mind merges with the absolute, the goal and the journey of universal magnetism and of the consciousness completes. So, friends, uh, please realize that this is this is the fundamental uh, concept in ancient science that. You need to go and reflect upon and uh, just uh, dissect anything you do. Uh, it is the universal magnetism, just respect it and uh, uh, kind of conduct your life. Be blessed by everyone. Any other questions? One, you said the universe is kind of like made up. You said the whole universe, the five Panchabuddhas, right? Universe, when you say, is it just the Earth or everywhere? Universe is everything. All galaxies. If you don't have all five of those existing in other planets or outside. So it, it is existing independently. Only when the when only when the composition is kind of uh, perfect, uh, creation living beings can happen. So, so the Pajapotas can are everywhere. Okay. 
right? It, uh, so it's yeah. some, one of them is more in some space. Yes. Uh, but it, all five exist everywhere. All five exist in the universe. Yeah. So those uh, combine to form all these elements. So the, the space, then energy particles, and then atoms and elements, planets, and all these things. Only when the comp composition of the Panjabhutas are in the right proportion, uh, the creation of life is, po is a possibility. And Earth has that kind of oh, fine. Because you look at Earth's position, it's not too far away from the Sun. It is not too close to, right? So it's a very good uh, position where there's good right temperature and good composition of air to protect, prevent radiations from other uh, planets. So all these things and water is there. All these things are in a right composition so that evolution can so happen. Awesome. Yeah. So that's a place where the consciousness decided to kind of do this and evolve until human beings. And then finally, it kind of uh, has the mind to question all these things. What did you do? What did you do to be here? Understand the source. Go back and find right. This is what happened. I have acquired all these things. Let me clean up and uh, in this existence, let me uh, understand this journey and be uh, merged with this absolute and live until my physical body perishes. It's uh, with a state of universal love and compassion. So, so that's the state. If it is possible to achieve in our lifetime, and uh, it doesn't have to wait till your uh, your retirement, right? The time starts now. What? Any other question? One bit like um, I heard the Mahesh's speech, so he was giving a, a speech to scientists in U.S. Uh, it, it was a three days program, so he was speaking for two days. So uh, at the end of the second day, the scientists they went back and they discussed among themselves, and then they came back to Mahesh and asked like, "You are saying the space is powerful." explain like uh, like we are scientists so we cannot accept anything without uh, proof so right. explain so Magrish has told that you are saying you will find out that earth is having a volume and it is having a some mass some whatever number so he asked that question back to them and then they gave a what are the number of volume they have like our millions of uh, then they he asked okay then you say so sun and Sun is having a volume as well. It is bigger than the Earth. But the Earth is rotating the Sun in a precision manner. And also, Earth is rotating by itself. And then the same thing, the Sun is also rotating. Then something is holding us both. That's why it is rotating. So when this much of volume is being holded by something, that should be more powerful than so the space is more that's, powerful. That's the reason the space is then they didn't add any question yeah. back, they accepted it. Yeah. That's nice. So like if but like for like science science, the models like everything has to be measured and things, but if you add this thought and if you think in this way, it's really then the space is the uh, more, powerful. more powerful like than anything because every like even we are here in the uh, yeah, which is rotating by itself 24 hours, and then it is rotating the uh, sun, but we are still standing. Yeah, yeah, possible. Which is the, like, gravity, like, in other words, like, Mahesh says, like, gravity is the different name, like, gravity is the name in the science as uh, for God, but that itself is the religious way it is, it is called as God. And one, one thing is the self-realization in terms of magnetism seems to be that the, the magnetism transformation of living beings is used to recognize that the magnetism of uh, of the space is, is absolute space meaning that's self-realization because we are part of the magnetism is, sorry the mind is only a magnetism transformation of living being and that is really a magnetism in, in diff, uh, those five different places. So right. to kind of connect together, that is the space. And it's right. kind of self-realization in a different term, right? Yeah, yeah we, because finally the mind merges with, the uh, magnetism merges with the absolute space. So here, your mind, 
you need to merge with the absolute space. There is a broker for that, it's your karma, when a karma aspect. So you have to kind of remove that. And, but otherwise, you will not be able to, you may merge for some time, but you will not be able to stay for, for a longer period of time. In your existence, you have to stay in that kind of a pure state for a longer period of time to be able to understand and uh, be appreciative of that. So if you don't stay, karmas will kind of pull you down, because that's bad information. So you will have to clean that up to be able to sustain that uh, merging of your mind with the visual space. Otherwise, you will not go there. Uh, another thing is um, when you are thinking in such a um, infinite space, you imagine yourself there and you look all the other dramas as so little, then you will feel why am I fighting on this little thing? Yes. This is such a tiny thing in this infinite space. Yes. What difference does it make whether I do this, or, I mean, whether I gain this or not, right? Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I was went to the planetarium. <coughs> they are showing how every satellites are formed, right? Mm -hmm. Moon is our satellite. And they are showing Saturn, then they are showing um, Jupiter. <coughs> Before you become weather train, if you look at it, you see different. Now, after <coughs> doing all this thing, there is an explanation in there. The scientists couldn't understand, but they are they are explaining in their terms, right? <coughs> there is no life on Earth, even though it is at the perfect temperature. There is no life on Earth for a long time until Moon was formed. And how Moon was formed, they are explaining in scientific terms. <coughs> the Moon came and uh, hit like a rock. And then if you see how the moon is formed, it formed from the earth, like a child. That's how scientists are saying. If you see the, if you observe how moon is formed, um, so it, this is the only special plan, uh, satellite that is formed like that. It looked like a delivery of a um, earth. No other um, satellites are formed like that. If you go, if you see certain, when they're explaining how the satellites are formed, it's like crushed and it's running all over, and Jupiter, it's like a belt, and Titan, they're talking about all the satellites, none of the satellites are formed like Moon, and after, the, once Moon is formed, it's actually, basically, Moon has the same component of Earth, a lot of uh, things are formed from Earth, and once Moon is formed, Moon is holding uh, Earth, so that it, uh, it get, get, gets the, it's not just Earth and, uh, so moon, moon plays a role in uh, life formation. And I think that is, uh, says something like, that's why they couldn't find another planet where life is formed. I think that there is an inner conscious who can understand, uh, because moon and earth are formed like that, maybe that's what the reason why it wants to try, can we create life? And then the conscious created the life on earth. That's what I understood by looking at, uh, what they are explaining scientifically. Okay. Yeah, we also read about it. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, in the moon, like a uh, lot of uh, earth particles is there. Because okay. it's formed. It's formed, formed from the, it's like some, something. Yeah. So it's a meteor that hit the earth and then all back to become an earth, yeah. become a moon? Yeah. Because it formed like a child. Maybe that's why the inner <laughs> conscious of earth decided, okay, let's do the same thing and, and it started, life started forming. Evolution. So, so the life exist only in the earth or it's some other part of the universe where it exists? Could, could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Water, or the, water is there, they proved in the many planets. Yeah, but and they could yeah. prove there is a life. Like, so why is the like, Gilles star is a solar system? Like, we are in the, our sun is one of the solar system, but the each stars will be an universe. Yeah. yeah. And there is millions of millions of stars, stars in the universe are there. My question was, can there be a evolved humans there? Yeah, uh, my Maharishi was asked this question and he said, okay, when you and I live in that time, we will know. <laughs> 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 so, uh, it they, is possible. They recently find the uh, twin solar system, it, it's the same as, but, yeah, yeah, they talked about, they find, uh, they call it like a twin solar, it's it exactly like a solar and it's recently formed. And it has two uh, some pla planets. It everything looks like uh, it's, it's, it's the only mimic of uh, solar system. 
So answering is this thing. So maybe there there will be an earth formed and maybe we all will burn again. <laughs> and, and the consciousness will think at least these guys are better than those guys. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have technology to find out. We have yeah. technologies, mind is mind. technology. Mind is the only thing. So yeah. the thing I want to answer you in another way is uh, your consciousness has a uh, uh, lot of uh, power to be able to go to different frequencies, right? You can go to a very subtle frequency and be able to control your body. And uh, you can become Panchabuddhas, destroy your body in a sense. You can become the Panchabuddhas and go to the universe. There are people who have done that. Uh, people, like you know, if, you have, if you have looked at scriptures, people say, hey, they, they are in one place. Yeah, they are different. They will do astral travel, right? So they kind of, uh, uh, kind of, Discard the physical body and the Panjabudas, the, the energy, energy particles is just go somewhere. Really. It can go anywhere in the universe and it can form anything there. You don't never know that. Those kind of particles uh, uh, which has con love consciousness and they can decide to do anything. Right? It's the consciousness is part of the absolute space. It can do a creation. So consciousness is life then? Yes. Consciousness and force are inseparable. So they together create life. So, um, so if uh, like people imagined alien, right? Who were imagined alien and they made a movie. Uh, so if they had that thinking of an alien, then then alien may be true. Maybe they, you know. Somehow somebody has thought about it. Yeah. it Maybe it's imagination, but somebody came. Yeah. So alien. It's good yeah. to be, and when I read, see, when I read the Thiruvarup, uh, I mean, uh, Vandana talks about more detail, about different frequencies where different kind of people live in different places, right? Angels, I mean, he talks about that they are kind of evolved beings, they are there, uh, high level of consciousness, right? So, uh, so Maharishi simplified the whole system. We don't have to kind of, uh, in this lifetime, let us first solve the universal brotherhood, right? right? Let us, uh, uh, then we become an evolved society, then this kind of, uh, the knowledge is already there, you have to just go on to the frequency, you can do all these things. Uh, but uh, where it's a starting point uh, uh, that we realize this and uh, uh, use this realization to constructively create uh, the society from the scratch with uh, good technologies, good, good things, right? So that itself is kind of enough for like another hundreds of years. And then, uh, Definitely those things will come back. At, at that time we can have classes for aliens to learn. <laughs> I had a comment on what sure. Chandran was asking about. If you got to see the movie Thor 2, uh, okay, go home today, tonight and watch that. The uh, concept there is that um, there are uh, people living in different time zones, uh, time lines. So it could be a me, we talk about the seven people being, uh, er, er, um, I mean, resembling exactly the same person. What they're talking about is being in so many time frames. So that is one kind that Thar too, uh, took. And uh, there is a one person, the Thar, the guy, he's the one who can teleport to the different worlds. And that is possible only during a certain time. That's a concept that could, you yeah. could easily relate to what they yeah. are coming at. If you are to understand all these, yeah. Things. So this is the fundamental thing, most fundamental thing. Universe has unlimited possibilities, so uh, it can happen. So if you look at the uh, properties, right, of consciousness, it has creativity, uh, perspicacity, which is it can go inside us of something and do something there. Perspicacity, uh, magnanimity is magnanimous. So all these kind of properties. Uh, are part of consciousness. It is just because we are the unique earth, it is there, we are perceiving it, but it, it is a part of consciousness, it can be everywhere, that kind of creativity can be there. So there's unlimited possibilities. But with our limited capacity of the mind, let us live and be in uh, uh, service to oneself and others. So that's what Maharishi is kind of, kind of directed. He, he wanted to kind of use this knowledge, foundation to build a new science. Uh, that's that's where he stands. Uh, he, these kind of possibilities are definitely possible. We have to conduct research. Uh, we are at a very very base level. We use this foundation 
do the use his mind as an experiment, use modern scientific framework uh, to explain things better and create a new science. And it will take some years, but we can rebuild all those things that were there in the past. Walt, Walt, Walt. <coughs> Let's conclude the session with the uh, uh, World Peace Prayer. Rain may pour on all parts of the world timely and sufficiently. Food dreams may grow to the satisfaction of all living beings. Leaders of all nations may grow spiritually and do good service to humanity. May the whole world enjoy happiness, prosperity and peace. May the whole world enjoy happiness, prosperity and peace. May the whole world enjoy happiness, prosperity and peace. Be blessed by everyone.